Hello guys, I am a big fan of Filament for admin panels and data management projects, but recently I received this comment on YouTube. Question, is Filament a good fit for large-scale production-grade applications? Are there any limitations? And in this video, I will try to explain my opinion on three project types or cases where Filament may be not the best fit. Disclaimer, it's not a criticism of filament, it's just that for certain types of projects, filament structure may be not ideal and maybe in those cases you should go for Vue or React or custom JavaScript instead of filament. And maybe I'm wrong somewhere, so we can of course discuss in the comments below. Case number one is when your project is not a CRUD-based admin panel, but more like an application for users. What do I mean? So if we take a look at the official Filament demo, which is public at demo.filamentphp.com, you sign in, and inside, if you look at menu items, you mostly see two things, tables and forms. So for example, orders is a table, customers is a table, post is a table. If you edit post, you have a form. That form may be complicated with some tabs on top. Also, there are widgets on top like these ones or on the dashboard. But basically, you see two elements repeating, forms and tables. Which is the primary use case of filament in general? The table may be in grid, so there are quite a lot of customizations, but still, it's tables and forms mostly. Now, compared to that, look at a few applications that I found on madewithlaravel.com, for example. Post flow, social media scheduler, visit the site. And for example, if you have this application, so still menu item on the left, so technically it's possible with filament, but here inside you have a complicated calendar with a lot of moving parts, drag and drops. Inside there's an editor like this, which also has a lot of custom elements. So yeah, this cannot be categorized as tables and forms regular application. Another similar example is called Mixpost, open source social media manager that looks like this visually. Or we can take a look at their demo on the official homepage. So this is social media scheduler. It's kind of admin panel with menu items on top, but it's more like user facing application with not that much table and form structure, more like custom application. So this is where filament wouldn't be my first choice, probably. Another example I found on Made with Laravel, this is built with Laravel and React, Lara Collab, open source project management tool. And structurally, it looks much more like filament. But the more you browse through screenshots, the more you see that most of those screens are custom pages, not tables and forms. So for example, this screenshot would be probably custom page. Invoice is a custom page, which is doable in filament. And don't get me wrong, this is doable in filament. It's possible. Possible. But it's quite a lot of work to make all that system in columns, in sections, in like table here without borders, or I'm not sure even what would be that structure just out of the box. And more examples. So my tasks, but it's not the table, it's a list with badges. And for example, another screenshot tasks belonging to a project with some filter here on the right. And this is, again, probably doable with filament somehow, but then it kind of beats the purpose of using filament in the first place because most of your time would be spent in Livewire, Blade, and Tailwind CSS. So filament would give you just the structure on top, but most of your time would be spent on custom pages. So yeah, to recap the first case when probably not to use filament, in my opinion, is when your project is more like user-facing application with data management rather than admin panel with mostly tables and forms, which is the primary use case of filament. Case number two, where filament would not be my primary choice probably, is when your form has a lot of dynamic elements depending on each other. So complex forms. And let's look at the same project examples, but from different angle, look at this form. So probably the content is filled and then you have filters for TikTok, you have preview, you have a lot of buttons which should add different elements. So this is mixed post example example from post flow with similar purpose but look a bit differently a lot of elements that add something to the same form 
change some value or refresh something, activate some other feature. So it's a form, but it's very complicated under the hood, especially, for example, if someone wants to post the same post on multiple social networks. Now I'll actually show you my tool that I'm using for scheduling social media. It's called Buffer. So imagine this form in Buffer. You add a post, you add content, then you can add a lot of things, then you can add emojis here and there, add tags, customize for each network, set date time in calendar, which may be pre-scheduled times. So this form, it's not one text area, it's very complicated, which is again, probably doable in filament because there is live after state updated and it's all reactive can be possible in filament. But then you get questions like, this on Discord, for example. I have an issue when something is not refreshed, switched something, something. Basically, something is not refreshed at the right time with the right condition, and then it's pretty hard to debug because all you operate with is those functions of filament, so you don't even access the code that is under the hood to control. Whereas, for example, if you have React.js or Vue.js application, you would have more control on what is refreshed when and why, and it was easier to debug and fix the issues, most of the cases, in general, and of course, if you're a JavaScript developer. But speaking about JavaScript and Filament, under the hood in Filament, all that form and all the pages are powered by Livewire. So yes, you can create custom pages with Livewire and do pretty much whatever you want with Livewire and Blade, but Livewire has a reputation of making too many server requests whenever something is happening. So whenever category is changed, for example, or searched for, this is done on the back end. If we open the network tab in the browser, we start typing and it should be, yep, backend request for search. So we refresh something, we want to update another component, and typically with Livewire, it would have server request, sometimes with reloading the full form because it's a Livewire component under the hood. And for complex forms, you may see real glitches on the screen because that re-rendering may take like 0. Point something of a second, which is visible. In Filament 4, they addressed this issue and made some improvements. So in the official announcement on Filament 4, this is important. Tools to reduce network requests. So you can use something like HiddenJS or JS with Alpine. And also you can use partial rendering. And in Livewire, in the upcoming Livewire 4, Caleb addressed that too with partial rendering from Livewire side, so it gets better. But you need to manually know and pick when to disable those server requests, how exactly. So basically it's extra work to avoid server requests. And again, this is not a criticism towards Filament. This is by design how that tool was built. It's based on Livewire. So if you have complicated forms with a lot of dynamic elements, you may have less than ideal performance with Filament. And speaking of performance, actually in version 4, I want to bust a myth of slow tables in Filament. In the same article, one of the highlights is improved performance of large tables especially, and I've tested it in my reviews of Filament, and I can testify that it is 2 to 3x faster indeed for tables, because the whole mechanism of how the table is rendered was refreshed with much better performance. So if somewhere online you see someone complaining about slow filament tables, this is not the case anymore. But for complicated forms like this one, to recap case number two, if you have such forms, probably filament would not be my first choice. And the third case I want to talk about when maybe not use filament is custom visual design. If your project needs something more unique, something more individual, because, again, if we take a look at the official filament demo, and if we take a look at other demos, for example, if you Google filament themes, those themes, for example, this is one of the plugins for themes, look at this. You can recognize it's filament. So colors are different, fonts may be different, spacing are different, but it's still basically similar elements in similar places in a similar way. Another example is filament themes by the designer of filament zap and look at the themes. They are somewhat different, but basically filament has some limitations in 
how you can customize the elements so you cannot make menu items however you want. It's a structure of filament and you can work with filament classes and also you can add some hooks in many places but still within filament CSS classes. So for example on our filamentexamples.com we had a tutorial in filament 3, it's a bit different in filament 4, but basically you can render any blade at any position, reserved position on filament pages and these are kind of visually structured render hooks that you can hook into. So you can add some HTML or CSS in those places of the page, but the structure of the page is still the same. You can, for example, put the navigation on top, but then some of the render hooks would not work for navigation. Also, in another example on our filament examples, in this case it's a premium project, we try to recreate a theme, something like this from material dashboard from creativetim.com and thought how hard could it be and basically it is possible with a lot of manual work so this is where we got into only the dashboard and if we take a look at the code so you have custom theme css then you override some of the default colors of filament and from there you work with basically custom CSS where you need to find the classes of filament, fi something, and then apply CSS changes to sidebar, to top bar, to widgets here and there, what else, stats overview widgets, and so on. So you can get the idea. If you want your filament panel to be really custom, you would have a lot of work with CSS and even with those, you stay within filament page kind of basic structure. And it's not just me, I found an article by Saeed Vaziri who created Vito Deploy project. And in this blog post, he shared his journey about changing the stack from Livewire single stack, then HTMX, and then filament was the next iteration, but the problem with filament was great until it wasn't. And this is the main thing, components were great, but the layout was difficult. Possible to customize, but it would be ending up doing custom blade files, which kind of beats the purpose of using filament in the first place. In other words, the more I talk, the more I realize all those three cases kind of come into one question. How custom is your application or project if you compare that to regular tables and forms? The more custom elements, custom design, custom form reactivity you need, the more trouble you have to make filament structure work in your custom way. And I will repeat again and again, this is not a criticism of filament. It's just not all the projects fit all the frameworks. It's similar how Laravel may be not a great fit in some types of projects. So filament is great for rapid development for mostly CRUD based apps with some customizations on top for some custom behavior. And in filament examples, you can see just the screenshots of those customizations. So custom element here and there, custom table with checkboxes, custom page with school timetable and so on. But most of those things actually are custom pages with live wire and blade. So even that, so you have to be overall good with tall stack in general to use filament on more advanced level. So yeah, what do you think about those three cases? Are they correct? Maybe I misinterpret something or maybe I underestimate the power of filament. I'm still a big fan of filament and I will use it for a lot of the projects in the future. I will still continue shooting videos about it, creating projects. It's a great tool for data management applications, more like admin panels. But in this video, I wanted to address the comment of limitations of filament or when not to use it if you have a choice in the very beginning of your project, which tech stack to choose. And finally, speaking of tech stack choice on Laravel Daily, there's learning roadmap on top with links to our courses for all possible tech stacks popular in Laravel, including filament four from scratch course, but also you can take a look at Vue.js or React.js examples based on the newest starter kits or learn Tailwind CSS deeper from angle of a Laravel backend developer. I will link that roadmap in the description below. That's it for this time and see you guys in other videos.